So we're gonna be checking out this mirror smart door and window sensor and uh, see how this works and compare it to some of our other sensors that we have that do the same type of functionality. Mirrors did send this free of charge to me, but as usual, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I give you an honest and fair review, the good, bad, and ugly here, and I'll let you know if there's any pitfalls. So let's go ahead and get this opened. So we pop it open, we have instructions, and we have a very, very tiny um, unit. Oh my goodness. And this is even tinier. Let me see if I can get this one out. This is super tiny. So this will be really interesting to see how well this works. Um, definitely much smaller than some of the other door and window sensors. So that'll be interesting. And we have a controller with an Apple HomeKit key on the side here. And a USB to micro USB with a power adapter as well. So we'll get this hooked up and I'll let you know how it's working. So the next step is to get the hub plugged in. First thing I notice is, look how short this cord is. I don't know, maybe like nine inches or so. Um, definitely really, really short and something that you might want to consider. You could have to uh, get a micro USB here and you know get a longer cable. It is just USB-A on the other side, so it's pretty versatile there, but really short, not, not sure why. So I'm gonna get this plugged in and I'm gonna grab the iPad and get into the app here. So the next step is to go into the Mirrors app. So I'm open that up and go into Add Device, and I have the MSH300 with the power button on it. So it says install the hub first and install it. And let's see if we have a blinking light. And we do, it looks like it's you know flashing back and forth like that. We can go next. And we have the HomeKit version, and we need to allow. And in the Home app, the Apple Home app, I can add this device. So add an accessory, and it wants me to scan the code. So we'll go ahead and scan the code, and we'll add this bridge to our home. The light on the bridge is green now, but it still says taking, you know, it may take a few minutes. All right. Took a little while, but we got there. Some stuff for now, we'll fix it later. So I'm gonna go into Apple Home here and delete the integration, and then see if I can go over to Home Assistant and add that in. And the reason you do it in Home HomeKit first is to pair it with your Wi-Fi, and then once you do, you delete it from there, and you come back to Home Assistant, and immediately you can see, you know, it's discovered, and I can fi configure it. So I can hit Configure here, and use the pairing code here. And as easy as that, it paired the hub. Now we're ready to pair the door window sensor with the bridge. So I'm gonna remove the battery insert here, and then we should be able to take this little guy and insert it into the hole to start the setup and press this button. Looks like we need to try that again. I had to press it twice. So these are all pressed twice apparently with the mirrors and everything is connected. So that really wasn't bad at all if you just do the right thing, which I did not at the beginning, but once you do, it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna grab the iPad here and check out the HomeKit integration and we will see that we have the contact sensor. So it's open because I'm just holding the one end. So what I'm gonna do is take this and you can see there's a gray strip right here and there's a gray strip on this piece. The other side doesn't have that. So it's just one side has that gray strip on each. And if we're watching the information from the iPad, we should see that it goes closed and open. Seems like there's a slight delay, but nothing major. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to install this on a door that we have another device on that's contact sensor, and then I'm gonna link them both to a light that is side by side using the same type of switches, the Lutron switches with the same light bulbs and everything, and see which one reacts quicker and you know how quick it is. 
So I put the contact sensor up here from mirrors right below an iris sensor that I had been using for this door. I don't need this as a redundancy obviously at this point, but I wanted to test it and see how everything worked before I moved it to its permanent location just to compare this between you know a former sensor that we had as well as the new sensor. Um, don't tell my wife, it certainly would not pass the uh, wife acceptance factor right now. So we aren't gonna tell her about this until she sees the video. So I'm gonna open up the Home Assistant app and show you what I did for the next part of the test. I created two new automations. The first one is the contact sensor, and this is the new contact sensor, the mirrors. So if it's opened or closes, then it's going to toggle the refrigerator lights. That would be the lights on this side. If we have the iris sensor either opened or closed, then it's going to toggle the stove lights, which would be the lights on this side. So your left is the iris and your right would be the mirrors. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the door and we'll see how we get reaction from the two of these. Again, these are both on Lutron switches, so the exact same switches and the exact same light bulbs. So I'll go ahead and open this door and you can see there's definitely a significant difference in the reaction time. The iris is immediate and the mirrors, there is a delay. And that seems to be pretty consistent, not a huge delay. So I think it certainly depends on your use case and you know, what, what your thoughts are, whether or not that would have uh, you know, a big impact. And it might even be the HomeKit integration rather than having the Zigbee integration where it's direct into Home Assistant, you know, that slight delay through the Wi-Fi and through the local network may be the, the difference that we're seeing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and let you know my final thoughts and whether or not you should be looking at one of these yourself. One other item of note, these just look a whole lot better than either the old Iris that we have or a lot of the other brands. They look much more sleek and modern as well. So definitely if you like the aesthetics, that's another reason to consider these contact sensors. And my final thoughts on the mirror smart door and window sensor. This is a decent product, definitely has a little bit of a delay in our setup, you know, it could be some other external factors, but definitely not quite as quick as the Zigbee. I did look it up to see what the current price is at this time, and it is the cheapest sensor that would fit within our smart home integration, so price is definitely there. And if you don't need that instantaneous information, where maybe you're using it for security, so if there's a one or two second delay, it makes no difference at all to you, it's certainly a great use case. And that's what it would be right here for us, where this door, we don't actually have anything you know, reacting based on this door being opened. So this is a security purpose for us where we have this contact sensor installed. So in this instance, it would be absolutely perfect. There were certainly other contact sensors that would have very similar functionality, you know, no additional bells, whistles, that type of thing, that are at least twice the price. I know you're gonna say, well, those are, you know, matter enabled or thread or whatever. I really don't care that much about which, you know, brand new protocol we're, we're dealing with. You know, we, we want things to work. So there is the, the bridge for this one. So maybe that's a downside to you if you don't wanna have, a, you know, another bridge. But if you're looking to invest within the mirrors setup, then having the bridge isn't a bad idea to, you know, integrate everything across the board. And it also limits the um, different sources of the traffic. So it's not like you have each device connecting individually to your Wi-Fi or something. The bridge, you know, consolidates all that down and sends it across to one signal, one connection to your, your network. So it's, you know, it's a mixed bag on, on that end, but definitely I would consider it if I was in the market for a low budget contact sensor, I hope you enjoyed my candid review about the Mirrors Smart Door and Window Sensor. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss future videos as we explore additions to our smart home.